It's week 11 of the NFL. We give you three best bets for this Sunday, and it all starts right now. Hey guys, it's Matt from GrandSandBetters.com and we have three more best bets for week 11 in the NFL. We'll get to those plays in just a moment, but first, make sure you go ahead, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of those NFL plays each and every week here on our YouTube channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button if you are ready for another fun-filled Sunday of NFL football action. I know I am, so without further ado... Let's dive into this week and start with the Chicago Bears and the Atlanta Falcons in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Falcons favored by three points here, over under set at 49.5 at the moment. And the Bears have now fallen to the basement of the NFC North as they lost that heartbreaker to the Detroit Lions last week. Justin Fields keeps putting on a show each and every week, and it just seems like there's no slowing him down. Last week, he threw for 167 yards and two touchdowns and rushed for 147 yards and another two touchdowns. One would have thought that four total touchdowns by Fields alone would have been enough to get past the Lions, but his lone mistake was a pick six interception, and that ended up being the difference of the game. Still, can you really fault Fields, though, with the one error he had? If it wasn't for him, the Bears might not score at all this season. He has 18 of the 24 total touchdowns on the year. Fields also leads the team with rushing yards, and with this run-heavy offense, they have already put up 2,000 yards total on the season. So, the Bears should be heavy rush again this week. Well, not so fast. Yes, the Falcons don't have the best rush defense. They're giving up 119 yards per game on the ground, but they aren't the worst either. They did just give up 130 to Foreman last week, but listen, that was on 31 carries. Where the Falcons actually lack, though, is their secondary. And although Fields and this offense doesn't throw the ball well or often, this week, especially indoors, we expect that playbook to be open just a bit more to pass on the worst secondary in the league as the Falcons are giving up 280 yards per game through the year. Now, speaking of the Falcons, they're hanging around the NFC South, sitting in second place behind the Bucks, and they have a real shot at being in the playoffs this season as some of the teams in the NFC have been pretty bad, like the Rams and the Packers. Mariota, who started this season well, has not looked great over the past couple of weeks. We know the Falcons with Patterson and Algier are a run-first team, especially with Mariota's ability to take off as well. But Mariota does have some good talent at wide receiver with London and tight end Pitts. Those two, they need to see the ball more. Between the two of them, they only average six catches per game for 70 yards. Now, Mariota has spread the ball well around it, but it's imperative that he gets the ball to those two guys to start putting up some more points uh, each and every game. In the last two weeks alone, which uh, might I add were both losses for the Falcons, those two combined for just 100 receiving yards and the Falcons average 15.5 points per game. This week, it might be hard again for them to get going as they're going to face a top 10 secondary in Chicago who just allows around 200 yards through the air per game. But the good news for the Falcons is that Patterson and Algier and this entire Falcons team that averages five yards per carry get to go up against the fifth worst rushing defense in the NFL. Chicago's given up 142 yards per game on the ground and on the road, they're giving up 170 yards per game. So, what is our best bet in this NFC showdown on Sunday? Well, Atlanta in their home stadium is putting up 26 points per game this season. And over the last three games, Chicago has really found their stride offensively, putting up 30 points per game. We know that both teams like to run the football, but in more of a controlled environment in this one, we look for both teams to flip the script a little and hit their wideouts for some big chunk plays down the field. So with our first best bet of week 11 in the NFL, we're going to take the Chicago Bears and the Atlanta Falcons over 49 and a half points. Now with our second matchup of week number 11 in the NFL, we're going to take a look at the Washington Commanders and the Houston Texans also in the 1 p.m. Eastern time slot. Commanders at the moment, three-point favorites. Over-under set at 40.5. Commanders, they're coming off that nice dominant performance on Monday Night Football being the then-undefeated Eagles, possibly giving Washington a chance at a playoff push, even though they do sit in last place in the NFC East. Now, Washington used a nice balance attack with Heineke passing for 
211 yards and a combined rushing effort of Robinson and Gibson putting up 130 on the ground on Monday Night Football. The one concern we do have with this team, though, is the offensive line. They have given up 32 sacks on the season. Now, since Heineke has taken over at quarterback, those sack numbers have gone down, but only because he is more mobile than uh, Wentz. Honestly, if the offensive line can give Heineke more time in the pocket, this could be a dangerous offensive juggernaut. The true X factor in last week's game against the Eagles, though, was that Washington held on to the ball for more than 40 minutes in that game. And if you want to beat the best offenses in the league, then that's what you have to do. You have to keep their offense off the field. This week, Washington most likely will not have to be as good as that. They are facing a 1-7-1 Houston Texans team who is only scoring 16 points per game. And over the past three weeks, they've only averaged 14 points per game. Now, the most disappointing thing about this team is that in each and every game for the Texans, they have been in the game. Six of the nine they have played have been decided by one score. They just don't have the offense to win those late game-winning drives. Davis Mills, he's only just another game manager in the NFL. Nearly has 2,000 yards passing, but has 11 touchdowns to nine interceptions. The positive side of his passing is that he does use every single person on the field. Eight different wide receivers have over 100 yards receiving on the season. And out of the 11 touchdowns he has thrown, nine different wide outs or tight ends have caught those passes. The biggest upside for this team for the future, though, is their rookie running back, Damian Pierce, who's averaging 4.7 yards per carry, nearly 800 yards on the season. You have to be optimistic if you're a Texans fan that if somehow you can trade for a veteran QB and put some better wideouts around him, this is going to be a very stout offensive team in the future. However, we're not in the future, and this week they're going to have to go up against a top 10 NFL defense as the Commanders are only giving up 324 yards per game with just holding the Eagles defense to 264 last week. So what is our best bet in this matchup between Commanders and Texans? Well, this Texans team, they've showed us for the most part that they can keep games close. But with that said, they have not won a game at home all season. Commanders, on the other hand, they're coming off that emotional win against the Eagles on Monday night. And some might say that this would be a spot that they drop off after that win. We don't think they do. Look for Heineke and this offense to continue to score points and the defense to get this one done for them. Texans are going to make this a game and it might have to sweat this one. Maybe a backdoor cover we're going to have to sweat with this one. But our second best bet a week number 11 in the NFL is going to be the Washington Commanders minus three over the Houston Texans. Now, before we get into our final pick for week number 11 in the NFL, just a reminder, if you do want our entire card for week 11, head on over to GrandstandBetters.com, become part of our family, and start living that grandstand life. Links below in the description, and we look forward to you joining our community real soon. But we do have one more best bet for week 11 in the NFL, and that is going to be in the 4.30 p.m. Eastern time slot with the Dallas Cowboys and the Minnesota Vikings, maybe the matchup of the week. Cowboys one and a half point favorites at the moment over under set at 48.5. Now the Cowboys are right in the thick of the playoff conversation at six and three, but have to be disappointed after losing last week to the Packers after holding a two touchdown lead in the second half of that game. Tony Pollard is the future running back of that team, no matter what the situation is with Elliott. To put things in perspective, Pollard has had 103 carries on the season, which is six less than Elliott, but he has 200 more yards than Elliott. Pollard's averaging six yards per carry, and if Dak Prescott can figure out how not to turn the ball over in this one, they may be the sleeper team in the NFC come January. C.D. Lamb is having a great season, 700 yards receiving and five touchdowns, but after him, Absolutely no one on the team even has half the yardage or half the targets of Lamb. If the Cowboys want to beat this Minnesota Vikings team this week, they need to execute without air by passing the football. The Vikings have the fourth worst secondary in the league, giving up 262 yards per game, having just given up 330 to Allen and the Bills last week. Now, the Vikings don't have a great rushing defense, but it is far better than their secondary, so Pollard might get around 115 yards on the ground, but this week, that is going to be the X factor. If the Vikings can get pressure on Dak and find ways 
to get the Cowboys to turn over the football, then the Vikings might have an easy road to victory. Speaking of the Vikings, mind you, they are 8-1. They now share the best record in the NFL with the Eagles. They're coming off what many people say was the best regular season game uh, ever, beating the Bills in overtime last week. It's not going to be by popular opinion here, but that game actually wasn't great in our opinion. Honestly, the Vikings were handed that game with the Bills' miscuses in the fourth quarter. Regardless, though, of what that outcome was, it was a win for the Vikings. And overall, the Vikings are a great team offensively. They're top 10 in points per game, passing yards per game, and second best in the NFL with points in the fourth quarter, which tells you if this team is winning, they can ice the game on you. If this team is losing, you better watch out because they can still come back and win it. Now, still with their record, you would think that their season stats would be better at this point. Kirk Cousins has only put up 2,300 yards on the season and only completes 64% of his passes. On top of that, he has 14 touchdowns with 8 interceptions. If it wasn't for Justin Jefferson, who has 69 catches for over 1,000 yards on the season, who knows? Maybe this team is 5-4. and four. Their rushing attack has only been with Dalvin Cook for the most part, but he does average 5 yards per carry and has the speed to bust out an 80-yard touchdown run like we saw last week against the Bills. This week, we expect to see a little more of Dalvin Cook as the Cowboys have the fourth worst rushing defense in the NFL. They're going up 143 yards per game and absolutely let Aaron Jones handle them last week in that loss. So what is our best bet for this NFC matchup? Well, this line will come at you and make you think it's skeptical, right? You have a 6-3 and three Cowboys team facing an 8-1 and one Vikings team on the road, yet they're favored by one and a half. Obviously, this is a trap, and Vegas wants us to bet the Vikings in this spot. Both these teams here, they're going to utilize the running backs, and this week the X factor is going to come down to which secondary can make big plays. The Vikings defensively are playing well at home this season. They only give up about 19 points per game, and Dallas is struggling on the road. This game, in our opinion, might go under the total as both teams are going to run the football a lot this week, but our best bet, we're going to head, head first into that trap. Our score prediction for this one's going to be 21 to 20. That could go either way, Cowboys or Vikings. But either way, with that score prediction, the Vikings would cover. So get that pie ready to throw in our face because we're going down that trap door. So with our third and final pick for Week 11 in the NFL, we're going to take the Minnesota Vikings plus one and a half points over the Dallas Cowboys. Well, that does it for us here at Grandstand Betters. As always, sit back, relax, enjoy week 11 of the NFL, and we will see you here live on our YouTube channel for Browns Bills Sunday afternoon.